Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 4. Uh, in this module, we have been uh, presenting uh, the connection between quantum mechanics and linear algebra. And uh, just now we have presented uh, the basis set approach to quantum chemistry. In basis set approach to quantum chemistry, we have uh, presented that psi x can be expanded in the basis of phi i and uh, the reason why we can write down this because we have pointed out that if phi i living in the Hilbert space in the same Hilbert space psi will also live because um, the linear combination of the the uh, wave functions living in the Hilbert space uh, will also live in the same Hilbert space. So, that is the basic idea behind uh, the basic mathematical idea behind uh, the uh, be behind this linear combination. Now, when you do this linear combination with respect to this phi i basis, one can present this psi as a, col a column matrix with its component C1, C2, C3 and we have said that this is going to be for the reduced Hilbert space where we have truncated this infinite summation to some certain uh, number n and, uh, and that is the way we can represent. So, when we represent this is basis set representation of the wave function, wave function can be represented in terms of uh, a column matrix. Now, when we represent it implicitly we assume that we it is with respect to phi i basis. If I do not, uh, if, if I change the basis to something else let us say chi then this coefficient will also change. So, this is going to be then let us say B naught. So, this is going to be B i and then then all this coefficient will also change. However, wave function is remaining to be the same. So, which way we represent the wave function with respect to what basis we represent the wave function it really does not matter. All we need to think about is that what kind of coefficient I get and the question is how do we evaluate the components expansion coefficient if the basis is known. So, that is the uh, point we are going to uh, address uh, here. If I have the known basis then as usual we will expand psi x as linear combination of I am not writing here something n or infinity because it is all equal now uh, equivalent because we have said that Hilbert space infinite Hilbert space and reduced Hilbert space will give me the same properties and rigorous mathematics can be used to prove that and uh, we will not uh, get into those detailed mathematics we will just uh, move forward with this demonstration how do I get this C i if the basis is known and uh, we can we can get it done and and we have to remember that this this basis phi i this basis are orthonormal basis with 
what does it mean? It means that if I do this integration phi i star phi i dx this is going to be 1, but if I do this integration minus infinity to plus infinity phi j phi i phi j star phi i dx this is going to be 0. So, so what we are assuming that uh, we are expanding total wave function in the basis of orthonormal wave function and if we do that then we can use a trick to find out C i. How do I do that? I will first multiply this equation uh, this expression by phi j star and then I will integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity over the entire space. We are continuing uh, with uh, uh, one dimensional problem one can understand one can develop the understanding with the help of one dimension and then we can translate that idea to three dimensional problem as well and we will do it at a later stage of this course. So, we have uh, we are using this trick and uh, and this is this is a trick which we will be using in many occasions. So, uh, we have picked up so we had a basis phi i which means phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 dot dot dot, dot phi j dot, dot dot So, phi n all this basis functions we have what we have done we have selected particularly one phi j and then multiplied phi j star from the left. So, we are multiplying from left this is a multiplication left and then integrate phi j star is multiplied from left. And if we do that then what I get here is that C i summation of C i i equals 0 to uh, some number minus infinity to plus infinity then this is I have phi j phi i dx. So, this summation is going to be now C i this is delta j i and uh, when I do that all values of delta uh, j i would be 0 if i not equals j, but if delta j i would be 1 if i equals j that is the orthonormal uh, basis the property of the orthonormal basis and this property exactly coming from the property of the Hilbert space Hilbert space property of the Hilbert space suggests that. Um, its uh, inner product should exist and uh, so what we get is that the entire summation will be 0 except for this C j term because in C j delta function will take the 1 value. So, I get this C j value. So, j th component so from this exercise what I have learned is that C j j th component is given by this integration minus infinity to plus infinity phi j star psi dx. So, one can say it is instead of jth component one can generalize it for ith component also it does not matter or first component second component everything. So, phi 1 uh, sorry c 1 I will get c 0 let us say c 0 I will get how do I get that? C 0 I will get it minus infinity to plus infinity phi 0 star psi dx. C 1 I will get minus infinity to plus infinity phi 1 star psi dx. C 2 I will get it minus infinity to plus infinity phi 2 star psi dx. So, this is the way expansion coefficient. So, all once we get this expansion coefficient I can express psi as 
C0, C1, C2 like this and I, I can represent in the matrix form. This matrix form I will repeat one more time this matrix form is, op, is, is obtained with respect to certain basis, basis is phi i. If I change the basis immediately this components will change, but it does not change the wave function just like the vectorial um, example we have given. But then question our next question is from this exercise we have understood that we can find out the expansion coefficient, but what kind of basis we should uh, uh, select and uh, uh, the, this has two answers actually what kind of basis we should select for, for our work. Um, each basis function phi i may correspond to this phi i, so psi is represented by some expansion coefficient i and phi i. So, this is the basis function and we question is what kind of basis we should we should select. Phi i this basis function may correspond to the orthonormal orthonormal eigen states of the 0th order Hamiltonian of the system and how do you get that? Uh, before I, I have been um, uh, mentioning this one from the beginning that I have this time dependent Schrodinger equation and under variable separation method we immediately get this time independent Schrodinger equation uh, E psi, but when we get this time independent Schrodinger equation we get a solution with a uh, associated with a particular uh, state. So, this equation gives me a set of solutions these are the Eigen states of the system. This is the just like if, if, we, if we think about um, uh, the particle in one dimensional box we solve this time independent Schrodinger equation and we have got n equals 0 state, n equals 1 state, n equals 2 state like this way we have got this. Each one is representing the Eigen state of this time dependent Schrodinger equation and, uh, and that's, that, that is what we call 0th order Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian which does not include any um, external potential it is just we have considered the, um, uh, the, the Hamiltonian of the system. So, for uh, so one dimensional particle in one dimensional box it should be then uh, just a kinetic energy operator and we so, so this, this uh, each state is the Eigen state and uh, uh, because we get a uh, entire state uh, the, a set of states these are called the spectrum of the system this is called spectrum of the system, spectrum of the Hamiltonian or spectrum of the system quantum system. So, why it is spectrum because based on this Eigen state we find out what kind of transition I can have from one state to the another state. Generally we use this kind of transition in chemistry to explain the uh, spectroscopy. So, that is why it is called spectrum. Now, one can use those Eigen states to expand the total wave function and if we do that then it is called spectral basis then I help this phi i. So, so phi i so, if I, if I take the phi i the spectra uh, the basis uh, if I use this Eigen states or the spectrum of the Hamiltonian as the basis to expand my total wave function then it is called spectral basis. But the and 
and, and what is the property of the spectral basis we have? We know that each function is representing the eigen, uh, um, eigen state or um, eigen state of the Hamiltonian and each function by its own nature is delocalized. So, for an example, I have shown it here as a uh, schematic representation of the spectral basis. I have total wave function psi here, but psi has been represented by different wave function obtained from this phi i. Let us say this is this yellow one is phi 1, this brown color one is phi 2, then bluish color one is phi 3, this green color one is phi 4 and one thing is quite clear they are all delocalized in, 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 in space. So, spectral basis by its own nature it is all R D localized or global in nature. This is the this is the property of the spectral basis if I if I take that uh, the spectral, spectral basis. So, spectral basis is directly coming from its own spectrum its own uh, the systems its own uh, eigenstates and based on that eigenstates also we can we can represent this. So, this is one way to represent the total wave function. However, uh, the spectral basis approach requires a very large number of eigenstates phi i and integration over the eigenstates because finally, I have to find out C i and C i the definition of C i I have given already this is going to be phi i star psi d x. So, I have to integrate a particular thing to get my coefficient. So, to represent the spectral basis uh, it becomes little difficult particularly when it comes to the numerical implementation. So, direct implement, numerical implementation of spectral basis is far from straightforward. This is why almost all currently available numerical methods for solving TDAC do not make use of spectral basis. Spectral basis is avoided generally. We do not try to solve the Sorringer equation time independent Sorringer equation and get that uh, function and then use it for the uh, solution for the for, for getting the solution. Rather pseudo, pseudo spectral basis is used under the grid representation. So, this these are the two uh, important com concept we have given pseudo spectral basis what does it mean? It looks like a spectral basis, but only difference between a spectral basis and a pseudo spectral basis is that so all pseudo spectral basis are localized you see this one more like a delta function this one at a different position. So, uh, and, and pseudo spectral basis is used under grid representation under grid representation. Now, grid representation we have already shown grid representation in, in one of the python tutorials uh, in this course. I will just um, one more time repeat what we would like to do I have the problem domain this is the x axis that is called problem domain or the position space in one dimension. This position space I will just divide into a small segments on small grids the, the, this kind of grids I will divide it. Each grid is separated by delta x difference and now I have the total wave function which is psi. So, what I will do right now I will represent this the entire psi which is a continuous function by its nature a wave function is going to be continuous. But under grid representation under grid representation a continuous wave function a 
a continuous wave function is expressed on a set of position grid points. So, what I have instead of this wave function continuous wave function which is represented by this dot line, I will have certain values of the wave function add on these grids. And that is the way I am going to represent the total wave function. It will it will be like this. And amplitude of the grid points amplitude at the grid point represents the coefficient of localized basis function. So, what we are doing here is that um, I have this now psi under grid representation psi would be represented as summation of c i delta j i this is i equals 0 it's starting from i equals 0. So, delta function so each one so at, at each grid point I have now delta functions assigned and the coefficient c i is the amplitude this one the length of this amplitude. So, in the end what I get is that um, I will get psi x 0 point at x 0 point I will get the coefficient c naught at psi x 1 point I will get the coefficient c 1 at psi x 2 point I will get c 2 and so on like this way. So, in the end I will be able to represent the wave function in the matrix form and it is going to be similar to the spectral basis form, but only difference is the nature. So, the matrix would look like following I have this psi which is going to be C0, C1, C2, C3, C4 like this. And this is called discretized wave function on the x grid. So, what does it mean by this C naught? C naught is this value, then C 1 is this value. C 2 is this value, C 3 is this value for just pictorial representation I have made them very well separated x naught to x 1. It may give you an impression that we are going to separately use that I mean we are going to use such a big separation, but remember delta x will be selected to be very small. So, they are not um, uh, heavily separated they will be very close to each other. So, so that we can use a huge a big grid um, uh, grid points a, a large number of grid points and we can represent the wave function it is the value of the wave function at on those grids. So, it is representing a function um, values on those grids and my uh, the form of the spectral basis uh, uh, zero spectral basis is going to be like this a delta function 
represented by this and then C i value. So, uh, once a wave function is represented by a column matrix using pseudo spectral basis approach under grid representation, next important question is following. What is the uh, matrix representation of quantum mechanical operators under grid representation? So, in the grid representation, if wave function should look like this, then we have to remember that in the end I have to employ Hamiltonian operator on the psi. So, what would be the matrix representation under grid representation of this Hamiltonian operator which will be acting on this wave function psi. So, that is the next question we have. what is the what is the matrix representation of quantum mechanical operator because I have to operate this wave function uh, Hamiltonian operator on this wave function. So, I need to find out the matrix representation of the Hamiltonian operator, but before we go ahead and find out what is the matrix representation of Hamiltonian operator because we will be using the lot of uh, uh, matrix algebra in uh, to find out the uh, ultimate form of a uh, uh, matrix representation of the Hamiltonian operator, we will briefly go over the matrix algebra first because we will be using matrix algebra to find that out. In, in, in this, in this, in, in, in linear algebra a matrix represents an array of numbers, a collection of numbers or mathematical expressions arranged in rows and columns like this. We are almost uh, most of us are quite familiar with this matrix representation just to remind what does it mean by this, these are the columns we have and uh, so this, 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 these are the rows we have and these are the columns we have and matrix can be uh, of the order of m by n. And when we represent a matrix certain rules are followed to carry out algebraic operation with matrices. So, what are the rules we have? Matrix is nothing but is a collection or array of numbers or mathematical expressions. arranged in rows and columns. So, M representing the row and N representing the column. So, first we look write down the row and then cross N row cross column. Matrix addition that is the that is one simple algebra we do with the matrices. How do we add two matrices? Let us say I have first matrix is A11, A12, A21, A22 and another matrix is B11, B12, B21, B22 we can add them as corresponding elements are added. So, I can add A11 plus B11, A12, B12, A21, 
B21 A22 plus B22 corresponding elements are added. Scalar multiplication if I have a matrix like this A11, A12, A21, A22 and if I multiply by lambda some scalar value then it is actually each element is multiplied. So, lambda A11, lambda A12, lambda A21 and lambda A22. So, each element is multiplied. Matrix multiplication and scalar multiplication these are the two concepts we have to distinguish these two concepts. Previously we have shown scalar multiplication here we will show matrix multiplication I have again two matrices a simple matrix two, 2 by 2 matrix we are considering because that will give us a direct visualization what might happen A21 and A22. I am just uh, matrix are represented if it is A then we just cover it like this way we are representing like this way. Uh, so, B matrix is B11, B12, B21 and B22. So, if I multiply these two matrices matrix multiplication will give me in a following way little complicated we will go this way and we will go this way. So, what does it mean? I will first multiply this one and this one. So, A11, B11 plus I will multiply this one and this one. So, plus A12, B21. Second one I will multiply A11, B12. So, I will multiply this and this plus I will multiply this and this. So, A11, A12 plus B22. Next one I will multiply this one A21 and this one B11 plus I will multiply this one and this one A22 B21. Similarly, I will multiply this one and this one which is A21 B12 plus A22 this one I will multiply by this one B22. Multi matrix multiplication is little complicated, but if we if we understand the order we have to follow always this order and we multiply and add them. So, final matrix elements elements matrix multiplication requires little bit more practice to uh, do, 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 do it quickly. Matri uh, final matrix elements are represented represented by I k is going to be summation of j equals 1 to n a i j b j k that is the that is the rule one should follow for the matrix multiplication. Transpose of a matrix um, obtained by 
interchanging rows and columns. So, I have to do a i j if I do transpose which is expressed by t transpose then this is going to be a j i. I just change the um, so if I have a matrix like this a 1 2 a 2 2 a 2 1 a uh, this is this is this is going to be a this is a 1 1 this is a 1 2 this is 2 1 and this is 2 2. If this is the matrix then transpose of the matrix will be given by this I just change the row and column interchange the row, row and column. So, this is remaining to be the same, but this one will change this is going to be 2 1 then this is going to be a 1 2 this is going to be a 2 2 that is called transpose of a matrix. Therefore, transpose of a column matrix is a row matrix. So, if I have a column matrix like this a 1 a 2 a 3 then transpose would be a 1 a 2 a 3 a column matrix will be converted to uh, uh, row matrix and this kind of column matrix are called vector in linear algebra. Uh, we we will stop here and uh, we will continue this uh, uh, discussion of this module in the next session.